Yo, what's up guys we already did the arena offense guide and now we're doing the arena defense guide this one is a lot more about concepts and it's a lot more about not saying specific teams but it's a lot more about saying like okay how do you get to the right idea of a defense because defense is a lot more difficult than offense because offense does it work or does it not work it's very simple to see you win or you lose simple defense you can see like okay how many times did i get hit but that also it's like, okay, was it an active rush? Were a lot of people hitting you? Was it something that uh, maybe was unseen, which is one of the big criteria for uh, defense in the first place? But it, it really depends on like what kind of day is it? Like, okay, it's always a Sunday, but who was hitting that time? And were you higher ranked? Were you lower ranked? So there, there's a lot of things that could be like, okay, it's hard to see if it's actually winning because also you do not know how it has been hit. Would be nice if it, uh, you could see it like how it was been hit. But also, yeah, it's it's kind of like in the middle, like how many times were you actually hit? Uh, it would be very nice if we see like the results of, let's say, the last hour instead of the results of the whole week. So with that, I mean the thing where it says like, OK, I got 150 hits and I won 148. And uh, on defense, I got like 200 hits and I won like, let's say, 60. That for the whole week doesn't really matter. Like it only matters in the last hour or the last day, maybe even of how many times did you get hit and how many times did it actually win? Because you might have like a low defense the whole week and then for the actual rush or on the Sunday you go to a proper defense. So a lot of things in there that make defense a lot more harder than offense. Once again, I also say a lot of people are really overrating defense saying like, oh, if I just have the Tian Lang, if I just have like those good defense units, I would do very good. I would say in offense is where you can get the best improvement because that is what you control yourself. Defense, you can kind of control, you can kind of try things. Here are definitely some tips that you could definitely um, be improving your defense with. But I can't simply say, for example, let's say I would say like, oh, uh, everyone wants me to simply say like, okay, what's the best defense out there? Well, let's say I would say uh, best defense out there right now is this, this. Um, let's actually put together a defense I got legend with this and then uh, my final unit was a Nora I got legend with this defense let's say I claim uh, this is the best defense out there then everyone is going to be building this team which means people are going to ask me how do you counter this team I show how to counter this team and this team is no longer the best and that's actually exactly what happened with this because let's look at what uh, a defense needs it needs the unpredictability this team does have that because the unpredictability is like if you want to bomb this and people didn't really know the interaction before the uh windy actually puts up the shield before the bombs explode because the damage of the skill three of sierra hits before the bombs therefore windy will put up a shield if you make all of these units tanky enough they will survive bombs it's super annoying but that is a mechanic that no one really did until i kind of made it popular at some point i think so that kind of stuff is in there we have the RNG a little bit on Nora. It's not really there, but we have the thing that it's unseen. And that is a very important factor as well, because if people do not know how to hit it and people lose to it once, they are like, I'm not going to hit it the rest of the siege. And that is also death goals. Do you want to go for your death to win or do you want to go for your death not being hit? Because you can make a very simple defense that gets a lot of wins because people underestimate it. But for that reason, you still get a lot of hits. Let's say you get a hundred hits in an hour, which is a lot. Let's say you win 50%, still means you lose 50. If your defense just gets hit like 30 times an hour and maybe you only win five, you only get hit 25 minus. And the other one was still 50 minus, right? So there, there is a difference in that, like what kind of defense would you do? And sometimes a defense that looks scary might be better than a defense that's super unseen, super, well, let's say a defense that doesn't look that scary but might win a lot it might be better to have like a scary defense but if people lose one or twice they're probably not going to fight it again so that's definitely a thing as well a thing is you can't clear it with common offenses the thing is at this time uh common offenses were something like uh, tiana zyros um something like i had some uh, i put some offense units over here at the top right Tiana Cyrus couldn't really do, Bombers as I mentioned couldn't really do, Lucian couldn't really do. There are a few ways to clear it, for example, a Leia. Leia can definitely uh, dish out enough damage with like a Chibu Galleon, Leia, Kai, Asher kind of style. That's the way I was clearing those. That's definitely an option. You could still Amber those. Like there's definitely still options out there for killing this. But a lot of the common offense that people were using back then couldn't do it. Plus, 
I did rerunic before rush. So I made these two the most optimal sets of like having them tanky, having them at the right speed, um, making all of these units like very specifically like good for defense with like high stats on HP, defense in most cases. Don't forget about defense. A lot of people are like, I got high HP. It's like, yeah, you got plus 35k HP, but you're on 300 defense. Like, bro, you're still going to get like one shot. So keep that in mind. Sure, against additional damage artifacts or, well, they're not really a thing in... Uh, but let's say bombs or ignore defense or all of that stuff. HP matters a lot more, but there's still a lot of people that have other units that still do damage based on uh, how much defense you have. So because of that, keep in mind the defense as well. So yeah, that is pretty much most of it to it. So what are the kinds of uh, defenses out there? Well, you have stall, speed style and hybrid. I would classify this one as hybrid. So it is pretty stall. But it is still somewhat speed style because the Nora is pretty fast. So you can't simply say like, okay, because a lot of the teams, what you want to do with hybrid and hybrid is actually pretty strong, but we'll get, we'll get into the styles later. For, for a second, we'll get into the later. Let's see at the units that we're looking at. So on the left, we have all of the speed leads. Then we have a bunch of HP leads. I think those are the most common HP leads. I think I'm missing one or two, but could be wrong on that. Then we have a whole bunch of stall units. I will also include free to play styles of it. And then we have on the bottom right, we have the whole bunch of mesh of pretty much strippers, disruptors, damage dealers, annoying passes, um, and other things. So let me show you a few defenses that I got legend with. And the main reason why they got legend was unpredictability, unseen, and people couldn't clear it with this, and maybe a little bit of RNG. So one of those, this is one of the defenses I got legend with. Thing is, well, the moment I used this defense, it got legend. Next week, someone else used it, also got legend. Afterward, it got farmed to shit. So that is the thing with unseen. Something is not unseen and unpredictable for a long amount of time. The moment that more people are picking it up because they see like, hey, that's a, the legend got that and I have the same amount of units. Let me run that because these are relatively obtainable units. These are two pretty old net fives and this is more of a recent net five. But even then, it's pretty obtainable compared to like, asking you to put a Tian Lang and a Seimei and uh, I don't know how many other like premium units in there. So what else did I get Legend with? This is a very interesting one out there. And that is the only reason I actually put Shina in here. I actually got Legend, no joke, with this. And you might be like, oh, that's probably like a long time ago. And yes, it was a long time ago. It was at the time that Shina still had the old passive and Sabrina still had the old passive. But everyone who fought this was like, oh, that's just pretty simple. I can just uh, cleave that really easily. Or I did this or I did, I think I did a switch with this as well or something like that. I, I think I had some speed unit in here for a switch. And then my stall moment was that, which we'll also get to shoot you switch to stall, which we're, we'll get to in, we'll get to that in a later. I just park it over there. So what was the thing? Um, it was unseen and it was unpredictable because people didn't remember the passive of Sabrina. And Sabrina passive now gives minus 15, or like it gives plus 15% damage, but also minus 15% damage. But since it's a PvE unit, we don't give a shit about the minus, right? However, that used to be plus 35 and minus 35. So the damage reduction for these two units was minus 35%. They could survive most of the bullshit and then dish out enough damage because even on additional damage artifacts or just a little bit of damage, they did more than enough damage to clear out um, offense units. And this was winning a shit ton. Like people were hitting it, but it was winning a shit ton. And then people stopped wanting to hit it because they were like, shit, I'm getting fucked by it. So that is one of those things that was unseen and unpredictable because people just forgot about the passive of this unit. It is very hard to find something like that to make it win. Like another uh, defense I got legend with, which got pretty popular later, was this one. Um, same thing, but then the unpredictable thing was I had a Shina that was swift. And the swift Shina was outspeeding things like a Triana. But I had pretty good accuracy on that as well. And this thing will most likely, unless there's another wind unit, which is probably your damage dealer, it's going to focus Triana might strip it, might kill it, I get another stack. How are you going to win, right? So if you happen to have like a super fast Swift China with a team like this, it was unpredictable and therefore it did really good. And those are the kind of things that you have to be looking for for your defenses. You have to look for something like the unpredictability, the RNG in there. What is RNG? Well, RNG is something like AOE armor breaks. It is something like, I'm hiding it right now, 
a kicklet. Kicklet brings in the RNG because it's going to hit something at random. Uh, a Nyx is going to bring in the RNG because you might not land your bombs, might not land your armor breaks. RNG could also be um, units that really uh, shine the moment that something bad happens. For example, a Gizelle. Like you don't kill the Gizelle in one turn because of armor breaks missing, strip missing, bombs missing, any of those. Gizelle will take a turn, put up invisibility. You have the same thing for Pandas. Those are like heavy RNG units, which can make it very annoying to actually kill things. Like same if you bring a team which only has one shot to kill the uh, Halfas, but then Halfas isn't dead and you don't have any backup ways of killing Halfas. Your team is going to lose. So those kind of things is definitely something that you want to look out for. Another thing that I got legend with, I think was something along the lines of uh, this. And then this for sure. And then I am not sure what I placed in the last slot. It, it was something stupid as well. But it was also one of those things. People didn't really expect it. People didn't really see it. I think it might be something like this. So people didn't expect it. People didn't really see it. And therefore was pretty good. So yeah, what are the things that I can say about the style of defense? What were my style of defense that mostly won? Well, speed style with the one of the Shina Martina. And also with the one of the uh, Shaina and Sabrina, that was definitely a speed style. And with stall, you can get pretty far, but stall is also a thing like, should you switch to stall? Well, if your defense is currently not being hit too much and you're winning a decent amount, I would not switch. But should you have a switch? You have a switch. I think the answer is yes. You should always... Oh, wait, where did it go? There. The answer is yes to this. I would say the answer is no here, but the answer is yes here. And the reason for that is, well, let's say maybe. Maybe, and should you have a switch? Yes. Because if the moment you figure out like, hey, my defense is not working, I'm getting farmed to shit. Um, I had something in mind. Apparently, some other people are just like farming it to shit. You should be able to make a switch of saying like, okay, this was my team, but um, it's not working at all. I can remove... Uh, let's say I want to remove this for an Abelio. Like may maybe that works better. Or I just remove this for a Triton that I also have ruined up. Maybe that works better. Or maybe I just want to like jump ship on the HP lead and or in speed lead and I just go HP lead. So those are kind of the things where you would say like, okay, do have a switch because you have the possibility of switching if things kind of feel like going bad. <clears throat> Plus, especially in the higher ranks, if you notice that some of the same guys are farming you over and over, like every time they see your name and they're like, I click on this because this is food. Um, the moment you see that happening, you definitely do want to have those switches. Another thing we have. So HP lead versus speed lead. What is better? Well, I can tell you one thing. If you give the enemy the chance to simply outspeed you, your defense is most likely going to perform worse. Let's say we bring in this, uh, we bring in the stall, we go for this, we go for that. Uh, we bring in the Abelio and then we bring in, uh, do we go even more stall? Now we go like, let's say we still go some kind of, well, let's first say we go no stripper style. So we go this. Um, if you bring this team, it's food to a lot and a lot of stuff. Uh, first of all, everyone that wants to take their time to clear you is going to clear you 100%. Because if they take like a Bolvrick Molong kind of style, they are going to clear you. If they take a Leo style, they are going to clear you. The even thing is they can go for like a Leo Christina thing. Um, they don't even have to care for taking any damage. Like sure, the Carnal's going to do some damage, but none of these units can actually strip. Well, this can strip skill one, but that's a really low odd strip. So for that reason, people can even outslow you and then still do damage to you. People can outspeed you, do damage to you. People can bruise you and kill you. So there's a lot of options to a team like this where I would say, I don't really recommend to go full on slow defenses. Sure, there are some options. Once again, a defense that actually got a uh, legend before and mainly because it was unseen was literally this, this, this. And why did it get legend? Well, it was just super annoying. And the only way that you could actually properly clear it was bombs. But people didn't really bomb at that time, at the moment. So it was less common. If you would run this right now, most people have bombs up. It's not going to do as great. So that is one of those things. It wasn't seen. It was unpredictable. And people couldn't really clear it with the common offenses out there. So then the question is, what should you go for if you only have like good HP leads? Well, I would say there's always good speed leads, which are more free to play. And as in the Clara and the... Um, Chloe, Chloe's maybe a little bit underrated. I'm not sure how good it will do, but definitely Clara is an option. 
but let's say you definitely want to use Karn. Well, I would say one thing. There is, let's say the enemy is using Tiana. Tiana is his main offense. Whatever he does, it's Tiana. Let's say we go for the same offense like this again with the um, Abelio in there. If we go for this, then it means that he only needs Tiana to outspeed you. So he can go attack lead, he can go Galleon, and he can go a unit to make it safe. So probably a Ganymede to reset the Abelio. If he goes for all of those, you're very dead. The thing is, if you make it to a certain way where he still has to somewhat speed contest you, where he has to put a speed lead in there, your team might do better. So a weird thing that a lot of people are like, ah, oh, that's so stupid, you have no speed lead, why would you put a Triton in there? Well, I put the Triton in there because I would outspeed a Tian on no lead. This forces him into, like, okay, uh, let's say this. This forces him into to also take a speed lead. He has to take a speed lead, otherwise Triton will outspeed uh, me. So, for that reason, even though you do not have a speed lead in here, still having a fast unit in here, and there's a bunch of other fast units in here as well. Could be a Celia, could be... Um, funny enough, a segment is somewhat underrated, but it can work quite well as well, because segment will target the uh, Tiana if the Tiana goes for an S3, and your units are on will. That's also an important thing, like, are your units will, are your units not will? If they're not will, it doesn't really matter, but if they are will, it does matter a lot. So, those kind of units... Definitely do help out to just outspeed that Triana in there. Or let's say you go for traps. And traps is definitely something that uh, traps. Yes. Yes. Let's go talk about traps in a second. So let's say we're going this. Um, but let's say we remove this and we put in an Rakan. But our Rakan is swift on our fastest set. Rakan is rocking like uh, on the fucking rock skin, he's rocking like 225. He's rocking 230 if you have crazy sets, right? 220. Like, it doesn't really matter. If they don't bring a Tiana that's fast enough, this thing is actually going to hit that Tiana provoked team. So, for that reason, it might be like, ah, oh, I can simply Tiana this with like, let's say, uh, a Zyros, Galley, and Ganymede kind of style. Super easy. I go into the match, my uh, Zyros and my Galley and this stuff are not on wield. Uh, this thing goes for provokes, uh, strips that, and then provokes it. Because it's also high accuracy. You do need high accuracy for that then. Then I'm like, okay, um, this unit will, this unit will, this unit... Yeah, I can't do anything. I fucking lose, right? Probably he wouldn't Zyros like two water units, but let's say it's Poseidon. Do doesn't really matter. Like, the idea is the same. So, traps? Absolutely yes. And that is the thing. There's a lot of units that can be traps out there. So, does that mean, say, do you always recommend a speed lead? I would say in most cases, it kind of does depend on your runes, but I would say for me personally, I tested out a lot of defense and unless I go for a heavy trap, because one of the traps that I did, very interesting trap, this, this, um, and I don't even remember the other two units that I placed with it. It might be that I did something like this and this, like I don't know. Um, but the main thing is, why did this work? Because this is like... It's a Leo, it's super weird, people are just going to outslow it, or you have like the typical counter where you make a Konamiya super low on HP and the Leo will trigger it. Well, the funny thing is, this Leo was 225 speed. The whole team was exactly 225 speed, like not plus 225, no, 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 in total 225, so on the right tick. What did that mean? If people brought in a Lucian of zero speed, these units were twice as fast almost. And that's the thing. People expect Leo's like, oh, it's a Leo. It's it's zero speed. Like, that's going to be fine. I can hit that. But no, the Leo was actually a trap. The Leo was faster, and therefore you bring in slow units, but my units are actually on a certain speed, and therefore my whole team lapped your team twice before you move. Plus, my Leo did absolutely no damage, so the Nemesis didn't trigger. So, once again, unpredictable. RNG not really, but mainly the unpredictable thing. Sure, can you easily clear this? Yeah, you can totally still bomb this or whatever. It did get a lot of wins, but it also did get hit a lot. So is that there for that great? I don't know, but it's definitely something that people didn't really expect. Like, okay, it definitely will take a lot of hit wins because people are like, oh, I can easily hit this. And then there's like, shit, I can't. So yeah, those are options out there. But would I say speed lead always best? I would say speed lead in most cases is pretty good. If you want to go free to play style, let's talk about like some free to play style offenses. Um, first, so speed lead, Clara, most free to play uh, unit out there. I would say if you want to go free to play fully, something like this, this, and then the final unit could be a bunch of things. If you want to go annoying and slash tall, it's going to be something like this. Make sure that this is fast. 
could be fast to switch set and these two units are just gonna be annoying and clear their stuff and do a little bit of healing and that kind of stuff but this team is pretty annoying to clear early game because you can't really lucian it you can maybe tiana it but for tiana you need like a speed lead because this thing might be faster than you because higher base speed plus speed lead so you need a tiana on a higher speed lead than that if you put that towards fastest rune so you're kind of looking at this plus this and then you would have to probably uh galleon cyros or galleon poseidon it and then the question is does it actually do enough damage to kill all of these so that could be a team that you could be looking at saying okay that might work if people were to bruise this with like a feng yang leo kind of style yeah this team is definitely gonna lose is it going to take them a little while yes it is because winnie's shield actually is pretty annoying and it does take a little bit of time so you have a few things in here that could be annoying but this team is never really gonna take any wins you could say for example like okay i don't really want to get hit by that so maybe i just put in the perna but that enables it a little bit more that tiana zyros kind of style is stronger again so also perna not free to play but you kind of get the idea of like okay how does things work i'm not too sure if you would put a rena in there if rena can actually hard counter the leo feng yang uh kind of style of slow clearing it might actually be like Rina is not really too good at the moment because we kind of have Camilla that does way better but it might actually be a thing where Feng Yang cannot just go through the shields and then Rina is actually a hard counter to getting slow cleared on Feng Yang. Never really tried that in all honesty. So yeah that's free to play style of teams. Um, would I say like okay free to play should maybe go for like a, a Veromos lead and then do something else like super stally? Yeah you could but is it really great? Mm, I don't think so. Another thing that might actually be good, um, I think a lower rank still, people are not really Lucian cleaving, but it might be a thing. Let's say we go for this, and we still have this one in, and we put this one, and we actually put the uh, Vigor on Fast Swift Set. Like, who the hell puts Vigor on Fast Swift Set? But if Vigor goes for S2, he has Anti-Crit. Anti-Crit will probably mean that Lucian is not going to kill those, right? So that is one of those things that is like, yes, it's a trap. And is it really unseen? Yeah, kind of. Like, who the hell puts a figure on that? Is it unpredictable? Yeah, people don't really expect that. So those kind of things can definitely help you out if you're free-to-play. I would say that those are some of the better free-to-play options. And what is technically free-to-play because it was an HOH. That's absolutely a good unit that I would say, like, okay, can maybe fit on this slot or this slot. Absolutely a good unit to put in. Uh, Windy is definitely a good unit to put in that stuff. Uh, chilling is uh, kind of easy to get as well. It's also definitely an interesting unit because it gets the speed buff and then... Uh, with the speed takes how it works in normal arena it's definitely a nice thing if you want to go more stalled uh, type it's also an option to go this but if you go this i would definitely go for more healers as well so you maybe go for something like this so those are a lot of like free to play options out there i'm checking if i see more free to play units but i think those are the main uh, free to play units then i would be like okay if you have a full full free to play team i would aim for something like this for your defense and that will probably bring you decently far um, it, it, and then it starts depending on like how good are your offense and how far can you actually get. So let's talk about offenses if you happen to have like more units. What, what are the better units out there? Well, I put a whole bunch of speed leads here. What would I say are the better speed leads out there? So a lot of people, uh, well, Sierra on defense, you don't really see it, right? Smath on defense, personally, I don't like Smath on defense unless you have a very specific team where it's super hard to outspeed you. And the reason I don't like Smath on defense is because it's pretty much food for Alicia. I don't think too many people still uh, run Alicia at the moment, but it is super food. Because if you go for a Samath, Bastet, Alicia, Kabila, you will guaranteedly outspeed the enemy because it's a 120 base unit on Kabila. Uh, Bastet will give attack buff, plus Alicia only has to kill the Samath. The Samath team is most likely fast, so you can go for S3. S3, uh, Alicia kills the Samath. The whole rest of the team is fast. Alicia S2, you probably wipe the whole team. If not, uh, Samath will wipe the whole team. So for any Samath defense, it's pretty much super hard counted by Alicia. And therefore, I don't really like it. Unless you play something like a Tian Lang next to it. If you happen to have a Tian Lang next to it, that kind of hard counters it where Alicia becomes a hot, lot harder to use. But it is still like one of those options out there. Also, Tian Lang. Tian Lang is not unpredictable. It has some RNG. Uh, it is not unseen. But how do you make it a trap? Make your Tian Lang swift. Because let's say I put this, um, I expect this, and then I expect like some other units. Uh, or let's say I even go for this. Let's say I go for, let's say the defense is something along the lines of a, um, let's say still this, 
with this and then we put a, a value next to it because we're an idiot and we forgot about the TL9 parser. Perfect. So we don't really have speed contesting right here, right now, because TL link bio is probably like what, 180 the tops. So maybe higher depending on the rank. So we could actually still go in with this, put in a Ganymede, Ganymede that's close to 300 speed as well. And then we just finish off with like, let's say Zyros or Grogan or whatever. Let, let, let's say we have fancy shit, we have Grogan. So let's say we go with this and a Ganymede in here. That does mean that I would outspeed this, I would boost the Ganymede enough to still reset. And then sure, the TLN could move, but only if it's not pushed back. So the, the thing is, if you have a Swift TLN, Swift TLN will overtake this team. So Swift TLN is definitely an option that I would say like, okay, keep that in mind. That might actually be a good thing for your defense in general. But then again, yeah, some math defense, do I really like it? Well, if you happen to have like that TLN and you can make it to uh, Swift, then, and maybe some other units that also say like, Let's say we go super fancy. We have this that's also super fast. And then you have like another unit next to it that's kind of annoying. Let's say for this. Yeah, this could be something where I would say like, okay, this is where you could use a Samath. But in this case, I would probably still recommend you to still go for a Vanessa because I think Vanessa is just so much better in it. Because in the end, Samath is maybe killing the enemy things. Maybe. It's not even guaranteed. Vanessa, just make sure your units don't die. Vanessa, you can just build full tank and it will survive shit. Uh, Hellfest is also something that could be a lot better in that. If you happen to have it and then ask you for the real question, what is the best speed lead out there? I would say Pontus is the best speed lead. And why is Pontus the best speed lead? It's the RNG factor. It's the highest RNG factor of any of those units because the moment that Pontus resists or doesn't kill or get it killed or like resists armor break, resists trip, resists the bomb, survives bomb, procs out, uh, is a NAM trap, anything like that, Pontus will use the S3, has pretty good AI to use the S3. Even if not, the S2 is an AOE silence. If Pontus moves once or twice with the right skills, you are going to lose. So Pontus is by far best defense uh, unit for the speed lead, in my opinion. Um, people might say, like, how about Neftis? Is, is Neftis great for defense on uh, this? I would say Neftis is very bound to a very specific team. If you go for Neftis, you have to get in that Triton you pretty much have to get in that uh, kinky. And you really have to focus on like, okay, these three units plus a something. However, the big issue is if someone goes uh, this plus a fast unit, you're always outsped. So yeah, like, like let's say we go for this plus an Avalio, that's our defense. Is that a bad defense? Not per se. Um, can you Lucian it with like this and then adding in Lucian? Probably not. But can you outspeed it? Yeah, definitely. You can 100% outspeed it. And if people can outspeed it very easily, then there's definitely ways to do it. However, we also talked about the way where uh, we said like, okay, we let uh, more move after Tian Leng in the arena offense video. Uh, this scenario will definitely make it that more will move. So that is the case. Also, how fast is this Neptis going to be? If it's Vio or Dispair, it's like, what, 280? If you make a Valajul next to it that's higher than that speed, like let's say a Valajul and Swift that's 190, then you would even outspeed it and shit. So there's a lot of options out there that you could say like, okay, this is still definitely counterable. Plus, a team like this is very easy to also uh, just Leo. Because sure, you have the Nefties maybe going into the Kinky S2. But the AI on all or both of these units is pretty shit. So you can actually just gamble it to just Leo and slow clear. Especially if this unit happened to be also another damage dealer that's not really a healer. Well, even if it's a Belio, a Belio is going to heal once and then you just take a little bit longer and you clear it. So it's not that difficult in the first place. So yeah, there's definitely options out there. But I don't think it's really the best out there. It would be good if you happen to have this plus this. Because um, at least you have like good AI to always use your skill. But you also have a cleanse if the, and a heal if things go wrong. So the unit is a lot more versatile. Still kind of walks into the same issues. But it is already a lot better. But there's still pretty easy ways of just outspeeding it because let's say we have the, the Triton in here and then we have like what other unit do they use? I, I've seen some people use it with Molly or something. I think Abelio is probably better, but just for the idea of it. Let's say we go for this and this and then we add in a uh, Rika plus Amber, GG. Like you just have to make the Rika Amber fast. If I already use a Triton on defense, I have nine higher on the base lead. So I will outspeed it. My Rika and my Amber will move, will annihilate this whole team, easy. So there's definitely options out there. Um, if you want to do it more safe, you can even put like all of her in there for that team. So yeah, it is outspeedable and therefore pretty killable. 
in general, I would say most uh, good speed leads or most good defenses these days start with either one of those two. That is, in my opinion, the thing. Um, I would say, no, these three. These three are the base for the best defenses out there for the speed lead, unless you happen to have the Panthers. But Panthers is like better, but yeah, let's just put Panthers over here. Um, what is meta right now? What is strong at the moment right now? What is annoying at the moment right now? Well, the most annoying thing is Camillas. And it's still somewhat meta to bring in double Camilla. If you only have one Camilla, one Camilla is definitely strong as well. But then you have the final slot, and the final slot is definitely have to be something on this side, and that is something that becomes a trap, a disrupt, an annoying thing, or anything like that. Could be another stall, like... I've been running this, which is definitely an annoying team. Uh, I think I can kind of make it work due to room quality, but this is definitely outspeedable. It's bombable. So I have to make enough HP where I would survive bombs, for example, or just be annoying enough. Like if I resist one or two things, I bring in the RNG. So that is definitely a thing. I tried this, didn't really work. Um, I tried this one, it was also not that great, but it was kind of okay. Uh, I've seen people do pretty good on this with like a Swift Rakan in there. That was definitely an option. So there's definitely options in here with the double Camilla. But then again, not everyone happens to have a double Camilla. Let's say we're only looking at a one Camilla. We only have one Camilla. Now you could say like, okay, I go right away for like two disrupt units. So I could bring in, for example, a, a Triton. Well, I've seen this team. This is actually a team that someone mentioned to me. Let, let's talk about this one. So let's say we bring in this. Is this good? Uh, yes, kind of, but also no, not really. Because Triton moves and then what? Like, unless you have a super fast Camilla that does a decent amount of damage in one of the two, like if you have two tank Camillas that are slow, this thing moves, AoE strips you, and then you're sitting like, yeah, okay, that was nice, you AoE stripped me, but then I still move, like, I don't care. It might be that my turn order is disrupted, but I still move, like, it doesn't really give a shit. So, for that reason, this doesn't really help unless you build it in the correct way where a Camilla can follow up and then freeze something. But Camilla will never freeze a Tiana. So this team is always kind of Tiana food. Whereas I would say that this team is kind of already better simply because it could uh, disrupt the Tiana on the skill 3. It could disrupt one of the other wind units on the skill 3. So you have a bunch more options out there. Um, you could say... Anduit. Anduit's definitely an option. It's free to play. It is a decent disrupt unit. However, it's very bad into multiple buffs. So maybe it's not the greatest as a single disrupt unit. But let's say we have this as disrupt unit. And let's say we add in this. But then we add in this thing as full swift. And this thing is also high uh, base speed 108. It has pretty decent AI to do this skill 3. But we add it on full swift. And therefore it's pretty annoying as well. But if we talk other disrupt units, like what what are like some disrupt options? Like I think the speed leads are all pretty straightforward. The HP leads, um, I think uh, Acroma is just bad at the moment. This is if you have no other options, but also kind of bad. Seen some people do Jessica. It's kind of okay, but it's somewhat uh, food for single target sniping. But it's not too bad. I've seen it doing pretty well because not everyone has single target sniping ruined up. So this for elite is mainly one of those things. It's kind of unseen and therefore it's pretty decent. Um, and these are just the stall units. You could go for a full, full stall. Should you go for a full, full stall? Uh, it kind of depends. Like if you think you make a full, full stall, which people didn't really prepare against, it might be good. But I think in most cases currently, a lot of the stalls are pretty bad because people have bomber runes. So even if you make the stall, like I said before, with the aerial triple uh, Camilas, people have bombers ruined up and they will bomb you with that. So it's not something they can't hit. They can hit it. might be tricky, but they can hit it. But let's talk about the disruptors we have over here. What, what do we have? What kind of option do we have? Uh, Bernard. Um, Bernard might be like a speed unit that overtakes the enemy. However, Bernard, I feel like in most cases, really doesn't do enough to say like, okay, is that really the thing? Because Bernard is fast. You could put an Asher in there. You could put a lot of like boosters in there, Bastets, whatever. But they're still pretty outspeedable. And you take a whole slot of just saying like, okay, I want to outspeed you, but I'm not even sure if I will do my skill. So I feel like most of the boosters are pretty much in a bad spot. Uh, we talked about the Seraph before. Seraph is definitely a nice unit, but it would have to be paired with... Uh, oh, you have two options of being paired with, actually. Uh, one is Raccoonie. Raccoonie on a Swift set will always boost the uh, Seraph. The Seraph is the slowest unit, and then Seraph on like super high damage rage set um, will maybe kill like a bunch of things. Definitely not a bad team. If you happen to have the Light Polar Queen, it's a better option for that. So definitely with that, you, I, if I had a Sorath, I would probably try it out once or twice just for fun. 
And I definitely do think that it is a decent team, but you have to put your best uh, the speeds runes towards the Raccoonie or the Eleanor. Uh, or Eleanor. Eleanor. No, wait, Eleanor. That one is Eleanor. So those are options, or otherwise with the Nephthys, otherwise Serath doesn't really become that interesting. Uh, this thing for a strip, you could say that that might be for a strip, but I would say that in most cases, Triton still does a better job. So I don't really like this thing for it. Um, Miho, uh, I think there's too many bombs, too many kinky skakis out there right now, so it's not that great. I've seen some Lucifers on defense. Lucifer on defense is actually kind of pretty food because it's mainly paired with like a Leo and then some way to actually kill things. Um, would you build this as a trap? Because what I said before is like, oh, people bring in like a Megan with like super low uh, HP, that kind of stuff. Uh, would you build it as like a trap? And then um, have the Megan, let's say the Megan is zero speed, it nemesis, but it didn't nemesis enough and you still move. Yeah, then this would definitely be good. If I would be using this, I would use this as a trap. However, if you build this as a trap, you cannot use it in offense anymore. And that's also a thing. Should you use the same runes in offense and defense? Well, um, let's say same runes off slash death. Yes absolutely do that and the reason for that is let's say you have a very fast triton on defense try to add in a triton offense as well because your runes are already there it definitely does help out and it uh, spreads the room quality less so that is definitely something that uh, can help you with those kind of things as well to just make uh, it a little bit easier to get your uh, room quality in so therefore like building this as a trap kind of makes it that you can't really use that anyway so yeah th that one is not that great uh, this one has a disruptor. I think it might be possible. I'm not sure how good the AI is to do the S2, but it might be possible. I haven't really seen it, but that will be something that for me is like the unseen factor. And if I don't bring any dark unit and if my dark unit is my damage dealer, which most of the case is, it brings the RNG factor to hit anything if it, there's no dark in there. So yeah, definitely do think that this is pretty decent on defense. I've talked about the Shina Martina before. Uh, I definitely do think that it's still good, but you have to build it as a trap. You have to make sure it's fast. Sabrina, not really that great anymore. Dark Monkey, you could aim for like outspeeding things and then stunning if they don't have will, but I think people will only hit you if they actually do have will. Laura on Swift is an interesting thing because Laura on Swift, if it goes S3, you have the speed buff and then something else would have to follow up that could be very fast as well. And then you could go for like a Savannah super fast after it. So let's say you go for uh, this kind of team, definitely something nice. If she goes straight for the S2, could be annoying as well because people might not be will. So yeah, definitely do think that Laura on defense is not too bad. Uh, I definitely do think that Rakan on defense is pretty good because it's just the disruption that might be the thing that's just super annoying for people. Um, Magnum, and that's I'm not even sure why I placed it here. It is maybe a counter, like if you put this in, people are forced to not use any speed buffs or boosters. So could that be maybe a disruptor where you kind of say like, okay, uh, maybe you can even build this thing like full tank, not even that much damage. But this could be an annoying thing where people would be like, hey, I can't really use any boosters or any of, at least buffers. So no speed buff, no attack buff, no kinds of that you still have ways to actually go with this guy in offense and bombers to overcome that. So it's not really the biggest of issue, but a lot of the offense teams out there do use boosts. So it might actually be a thing that people have like, okay, that's kind of unseen and I can't clear it with my common offense. So Magnum on defense might actually be a thing. Uh, this thing on defense, I think is just absolutely uh, zoggy shit. It's just stalling. It's just slow. And that's all it is, what it does. It doesn't really do too much anything. I've seen some people use this as of lately. Um, this thing has the passive where if he's full HP, he takes a lot less damage. But is that really too great? I'm not sure. If he could kill anything afterwards, maybe. Otherwise, don't really think it adds in too much. Um, same thing for Hey Gang. Oh, well, let's see. Go. Let's go Kinky first. Kinky definitely a good unit in all kinds of defense, but you have to keep in mind that there's a lot of units that guarantee crit as your S2. Uh, your S3 guarantee credits, well, a little bit more premium units, but uh, Kinky is definitely something that people kind of got used to. It's not that much RNG, but in the right team, this is definitely still annoying. Let's say we go for this and we have those two units actually follow up that they're fast enough after this and they start killing things. So if you make this team and this one is like super slow tanky, super slow tanky, and then this moves, it's not going to do anything. But this could be a team or this could be a team or even that could be a team. If you use that as a team, you might not even need this, but you can play something else because you already have the speed lead in there. So 
you can build something else annoying that uh, could do the speedy thing. So definitely that does every team need Camilla? Can you do any team without Camilla? No, totally you can do teams without Camilla. I would probably recommend to if you want to go for some stall ish stuff. I would recommend to go in Triana and then maybe you go this plus like a disruptor of any kind of shape or way. So if you go this, definitely would put this pair on this or something like that. So this is kind of stally. It's kind of uh, can be very tanky. This thing can still be on damage. Can dish out some damage. This thing could be on damage as well with crit rate four or something. Or just go like full stall. Those are definitely teams out there that are less premium. If you don't happen to have a Camilla or something like that, that you still have options. Like, okay, I could work around with something. Uh, let's continue on with the other units. Hey gang, I've seen it sometimes on defense, but it's not that great. It's probably only good against Chiwu offense, but Tiana already counters it and everything that outspeed it also counts it. None on defense is definitely not bad, but you would have to keep something in mind like what is going to make my kill. And in the team that I did with uh, this and this, which is still a decent team if you have a very fast uh, Shina, and then the Martina on high damage, this also still on damage, you can make the kills that way. But if you do something like this, this is also an option. Let's say you have that unit. You put this on Swift. It makes the first kill pretty fast because this on Swift does do a lot of freaking damage. It might take the first kill and therefore it might instantly give you a stack. Sure, it's still counterable by Leo, but as you maybe have noticed right now, anything is counterable by something. So yeah, that's also the kind of thing. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Savannah, as mentioned, Swift unit, pretty annoying. Nora, you could place Nora on Swift. Most Noras on Nano Swift. Nora AI is pretty shit. So, is Swift the right way? But in most cases, you, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really do enough. Manon, definitely an annoying unit still. But uh, in a lot of cases, like her passive is nerfed enough that you always kill her. So, if you don't kill all of the allies, at least you kill her. So, it's some RNG, but the RNG is definitely hard enough nerf that I don't think it's that great. Um, I see sometimes people with uh, Zen on defense. I think Zen on defense, it definitely does bring the RNG, but it doesn't bring too much more than the RNG, and his base speed is not that great. So it's kind of there, but it's not super good. Um, Giselle, I'm actually going to skip, because I think Giselle is one of the best, if not one of uh, the best defense units out there right now. So I'm going to skip that for a second. Um, Alexandra is definitely a unit I would be taking on defense if I had one. And the main thing I would do with Alexandra is just like put so much HP on it that no matter... Like, let them hit as hard as possible, keep no defense in, but so much HP that they would just kill themselves on, like, Reflex, which is kind of funny as well. So, definitely do think that one is good. She is not good, because she doesn't reflect AoE. It's just reflect single target, and then when you unit dies, and then nothing happens. So, it doesn't really matter. Juno on defenses, I think it's kind of okay-ish, but I would keep some other, like, Disruptor or Fast units next to it. So, it, it does disable a few things that people could hit you with. But in the end, people can still easily outspeed you, Tiana, you, and just do whatever. So you have to keep something in there. But would you say like this plus this? That doesn't really make too much sense. So yeah, you, you could almost say like, oh, then I go for the Bernard here and then for something because I want to put my Juno on defense. Juno is not that great on defense. If you really want to have a strip, might as well just put the Clara in first. And that's already adding in a lot more than the Juno on defense, I would say. Anduit, definitely a good unit. Anduit does kind of have issues with stripping things uh, because his strip activation rate is only like 30%. He only strips one debuff. It's not that much. But a lot of the things like a typical Tiana team is going to walk into like an Anduit. So Anduit definitely is a nice disruptor unit that if you don't have too many of like the premium units out here, Anduit is probably the unit you will have through the HOH. And that's definitely a unit I recommend you to put on defense. Um... Segment can be interesting, but was working better for me in the past. Currently not working as well. Geeklet is nice, but definitely have to put it swift super fast. Uh, we have seen some ragdolls on defense. It could be nice, but uh, not necessarily for a stall team as well for a team that's like semi-speedy. And the team just picks up after the uh, first unit moved on their side. You just need a little bit of crit boosting and therefore you already move. Uh, Nyx, definitely a nice unit. It brings in the RNG. Uh, a lot of the people would not really like to hit you with bombs. The thing is, people can hit you with armor breaks that have multiple appliance effects. So, for example, a Truffle or, uh, let's say, um, Asima, those kind of units. So, if you use that, you have to make sure that uh, Truffle is just doing the armor breaks. So, it has to be that, let's say, someone goes Tiana, uh, this... Uh, truffle and then a damage dealer they already lack the attack buff so they need a unit that has attack buff plus something or they need to put a wo young in here or something like that so definitely if you use a nyx i wouldn't go for like oh i have nyx 
And then I go like all kinds of slow units because I have Nyx, they can't do anything like Galleon anyways. No, there's other options out there. I would definitely still make your Nyx on a speedy kind of team where you probably still have like another disruptor in there as well. So you go something like this and then you, you maybe go something like this. It's kind of like slow clear food, but you at least have some options in there that for the speed clearing, it's not really working too well. So there, there's a few options in there. You guys can be creative on that. Uh, same for Celia. Celia is definitely a nice unit. It's somewhat harder to outspeed. Definitely keep like good swift runes on it. You could put Vio on it, but don't think it's as great. I've seen some Tashers on defense because you do have the disruption with AoE. Uh, it will always go for the AoE skill because if you hit once, you always go the AoE skill if it's on cooldown. So therefore, you could stun a few things. It's pretty high on the base speed, so it is an option. But it was working when it was unseen, but currently I think people are used to it as well. Well, Tian Lang is definitely up there. That's definitely a unit that's uh, very good, so definitely up there. And uh, Seimate is one that I didn't speak about. Seimate is definitely good. If you're expecting to be hit by a lot of bombers and that kind of stuff, Seimate might be interesting. So then talking about what are like the best defenses out there. Well, for me personally, one of the best defense right now would be a Pantus with a Gizel and then double Mila. Um, if you want to see how to counter it, I see a lot of people in Europe use this. Uh, watch my me rushing because this is actually definitely countable as well. But you have like the two big RNG factors in here. If you don't kill those in the first rotation, guaranteed, you're most likely going to lose if they have the Camilla's good run. So yeah, those are definitely strong defenses out there. But then the question is, say, what kind of defense should I run? And the thing is, I cannot say your defense to run right now. And that is the same thing as I mentioned at the start of the video. If I tell you, you, everyone has to run this. Let's say this is very obtainable. Everyone has to run this. Everyone starts running this. People start asking me how to clear it. Uh, you clear it with bombs. Everyone starts running up the best bombs that they can. And then next week you use this again and get farmed to shit. Why? Because I told people how to uh, farm it. And that's the thing. I could also say like, oh, I don't tell people how to farm it. But people will figure out. Like, I don't have to tell people. People will figure out. And then people talk to other people. And then it's, it's pretty easy like that, right? So... I can't really say what's the best defense out there. There is not really a best defense out there. Any defense can be hit. Like even the defense that I just mentioned with the um, Pantas and stuff can be hit. The only thing is you need a more specific team against it that people might not have ruined up because the team that's countering this, which is Sonia's, can't give you that much, but Sonia's are so specific that you have to a have them b also have them ruined and c are they also countering something else so in the case sony has very good offense at the moment the current meta but if it would only be countering this would i throw that much room quality to that so then it's the fact that like can be cleared with common offense like can be cleared but if you have a very specific offense and that is kind of the thing that you have to be looking at like so what are common offenses it's also not something I can give a clear answer to because that kind of changes on the meta. Because let's say that uh, before uh, we had like a pretty common like go as many Camillas as possible meta because that's good. Well, because of that, people transition into more bombers. But if that's not the case and people transition into something, uh, let's say like this becomes the meta defense. Everyone is uh, running this because it's incredibly good, like for whatever reason. This is Lucian food, just double Lucian food. Um, then everyone will start double lucianing. If something else is very Zyros food, everyone will start Zyrosing. So what is the most common offense out there really is determined by what are the common defenses right now. And that cycles around all the time. So I don't have a clear answer for that because, not because I don't know, it's because it's not there. And for that reason, what can I give you as final tips for arena defense? A, be creative and unpredictable, find something that gives RNG, Find something that's unseen. It can work for two, three weeks, and then it probably starts falling off a bit, and you have to be uh, creative again, or you just follow up with whatever anyone else did. So you have to keep like good track of what like people at like higher ups do. You just check their defenses and that kind of stuff. And then you, you have to look for can't clear with common offense, and you have to reroom before the rush and focus on traps. Definitely focus on traps. And one thing I can definitely say is, uh, well, this is like. This versus this, yes, no. I would say speed is better. But that's my opinion. Some people would disagree with it, but I see in high G3, I see very little HP leads out there. I see a lot of more speed leads out there. And would you say like, yeah, but say I, I can do speed stuff, but I have no speed runes. I've only been farming Necro and, and Dragons and I've never been in that. Well, the thing is you can make a Clara on Vio and you can make like a whole team that could be speedy still on Vio. 
like this you can throw on this pair and then uh, let's say you have this and you have this and you have this if your clara is not super fast but it's actually on vio and people would slow clear you a slow clear of a leo could get fucked by a vio clara so keep those things in mind you don't have to have like a uh, swift to your clara it's just the thing that people might think it's there and that's also the thing like is it somewhat unpredictable to be on vio yes because people expect you to be swift right so even like you could make your android on swift and then just push back at the right time people are like oh i normally outspeed android and have like three fast units and then android's like what 280 max and then i outspeed that is cool oh no wait that android is uh 330 and the android is like fucking zooming and then pushing back my whole team and actually doing a lot of damage because it was crit rate four and then it's scaling on speed so there's a lot of things to say like okay you can be unpredictable if you think about things like okay what would work what do people have not seen and that's the kind of way how siege works and or uh, siege work, arena uh, defense works so and actually i thought this topic is going to be like 15 minutes easy just breezing through like these are the good defenses uh, piece i'll buy but the concept is actually a lot more dynamic than i thought so yeah the video is pretty lengthy we got about 52 minutes we'll probably cut out a few parts but guys thanks a lot for watching um let me know in the comments if this was actually helpful or you're like, yeah, I got a whole bunch of information, but I still don't know what to do. Well, the thing is, I'm not teaching you. I'm, uh, let, let's say I'm giving you a fish. I'm not giving you a fish. I'm teaching you how to fish. Because if I give you a fish, giving you a fish would be something like I can do that in three seconds. In three seconds, I could say like, okay, this is a good unit for defense. 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 I got lighter with it. Everyone run this. It's a good defense. Like, I'm pretty sure people are going to clip this part and like, I'm going to run this. <laughs> Please watch the whole fucking thing and then understand why this is good or why this is bad or why this is being farmed right now because people have been running this before. Still good defense, though. De definitely do think that this is not a bad defense if you have those units. But, yeah, you have to think about your stuff. What do you have? If you have nothing, if you're not creative, then just copy what you see at the top. And that is like... This is just copying what you saw at the top. So that's pretty much all there is for Rush, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Let me know in the comments if this was useful or not. And see you as always in the next one. And definitely see you on Sundays rushing. I might also do Rush on the alt, which could be funny as well. But definitely we'll be rushing on the main. I'm going to get those LD pieces in. And see you later.